How do identifying the rate of change and the initial value help you create a model for a linear relationship? In this lesson, you will learn how to create a linear relationship in slope-intercept form by using a table of values. Let's review. You can show linear growth in many ways, including a sequence of numbers, a table of values, and a graph. Regardless of how we show our linear growth, we know that linear growth shows equal differences over equal intervals. If we look at this selection here, they all show the same different kind of linear growth. They're all increasing by three, regardless of how we're showing them. Let's also review that you know how to write a linear function in slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b form, and in this case, m is the slope, or the rate of change, and b is the y-intercept, also known as the point where x is 0, so the value of y when x is 0. Let's see how this works in a graph. If we have this equation here, y equals 0.5x plus 3, and we graph that, then we have this line right here. And a point over here would show that, let's say that my graph is showing the, the height of my plant over a certain number of days. So this point here, 3018, shows that my plant would be 18 inches tall at 30 days. And I can show that in a table of values where I'm increasing by 0.5 every single day. Now a common mistake that a lot of students make is confusing the slope with the y-intercept. So if we have an equation such as this, y equals 2x plus 3, we know we have a 2, and we know we have a 3, but we're not quite sure which one goes where. We have to remember that that 2 represents the rate of change, and the, the, um, the number that represents the rate of change, or the slope, always is the coefficient for the x, and the number that's sort of off by itself is our y-intercept. That's our initial value, or what y is when x is 0. And if we were going to graph this y equals 2x plus 3, it would look like this. We start at the point of 0, 3 on our y-intercept, and then we increase up 2 and over 1 every, for every point that we graph. Now let's see how this works in a lesson. Say, for example, that you have a backpack that weighs 3 pounds, and each additional book you put in it weighs one and a half pounds. How much will your backpack weigh with each additional book? Let's start off by putting some information into a table. I know that my backpack weighs three pounds with zero books in it. Um, if I put one book that weighs a pound and a half, I'm, my total weight would be 4.5 pounds. If I put another book in, which is another pound and a half, two books, six pounds, and so on like that. Now I have this number here that's circled, that's a three. That's the value of my of, of my weight when my books is zero when my books are zero, sorry. Uh, when I have zero books, my value and weight is three, so that's my y intercept. And my growth rate is that I'm adding 1.5 every single time. So I have this equation here, y equals 1.5x plus 3. 1.5 of course is my slope and 3 is my y intercept. And let's take these points right here and put them into a graph. So I'm just going to put those points right there into a graph. I'm not going to connect them with a line, and the reason I'm not going to connect them with a line is that a line would imply that I would have a continuous variable, but in this case I have what's called a discrete variable. I can't have a fraction of a book. I can't just put a fraction of a book into my backpack. And if I drew it with a line, I would imply that I could put a third of a book into my backpack, or three and one-fourth books into my backpack, but I can't. Um, I can only put books in one at a time, so I'm going to just show the points on uh, on my graph, and they will be they they will they will follow a linear pattern. So they will look kind of like a line. And then from there, I can say, hey, if I had eight books, how many pounds would my backpack weigh? And I can either substitute eight in for x, or I can continue with my table, or I can continue with my graph. And I would find that eight books would weigh 15 pounds. Now, what would happen if I have a table like this? Here, I have um, a a y-intercept of 5, but this time I'm decreasing. I'm going down by 3 every single time. So this time my rate of change is negative 3. And your rate of change can be negative. That's fine. Um, here I would write that as y equals negative 3x plus 5, where negative 3 is my slope, and 5 is my y-intercept. In this lesson, you learned how to create a linear relationship in slope-intercept form by using a table of values.